we're still rolling. We're still rolling. We're still rolling.
Maybe there'll actually be some trees in that one? There is some trees down there. So I've actually rode Meadow Valley. Yeah. When, when I went with Connor down to Spring Creek Nationals, we camped at Meadow Valley. Where is this? Uh, so Millville and Rochester. Okay. Right. Right. So yeah, just got done with the three hour and runner. We both ran the Ironman class. Tried to. I only made it two hours. <laughs> Yeah, well, funny thing there, I, we just I don't, I just followed a plug again, I think. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to, like, we never did pop the plug, I'll have to find out. But 125, we're following plugs. I think this is my fault. That I mentioned it, mixing are pretty rich. Um, I also, I'm kind of a pussy on the throttle, too, a little bit. I think sometimes I'm in a higher gear at some points, and I'm not, I'm not ringing it like it should be. So, 125 is like their neck around. That's yeah. for damn sure. Um, but anyway, follow the plug, which is unfortunate. Right, right after your fuel stop. Right after my fuel stop. Right, and I asked, I asked her at like, at, I was like, what, what's the time? And I shouldn't, I shouldn't even ask. Me. Two hours, and I was like, oh, I'm way further than I need to. Yeah. Like, but then I, I left the fuel stop, and then it just died on me. Yeah, I kicked for 15 minutes straight. I pushed it up a hill. I tried to roll start it, and it just didn't want to go. So classic fall plug. Uh, I uh, yeah. I just put my tail between my legs and walked back up the truck. It's too bad, and you know, unprepared us should, should really we're on a two smoke bike. Right. We should really have plugs. You would think along. <laughs> No plugs along, so that kind of kind of ends the day earlier than a guy wants. But I mean, if you think about it, I still got more ride time than the guys were splitting time. Yeah, exactly. You did. I don't take the whole bike thing that seriously. If I, I I'm here to get some seat time. And I don't know. I'm not great on the two wheels. Not great. I'm not gonna say I'm very much better other than I just got more time. And I picked a bike back up last year. Picked, picked up that 125. Um, started throwing myself into the deep pen. Some open A-class stuff in D23 over in Minnesota. And then um, two hour A out here in South Dakota. I'm not an A-class rider, but I, I, like I said, just trying to learn how to swim in the deep end a little bit. Right. Um, I don't know, today was cool though, a nice fall day. It oh, it was beautiful out. Cool this morning. It really didn't get all that, the sun had some power. Yeah. But I bet temp, air temp wise, we weren't, we didn't hit 70 degrees. Oh, no. no. In typical runner fashion, the course was rough as hell and dusty as hell. Yep. But that's just that's just how it goes down in runner. Um, I I enjoyed this this course. Yeah, they changed it up from the monthly yeah. stuff a little bit. I did not mind it. It was it was all new to me. Uh, when um, when you got in the back, it felt a little bit more wide open. On a few sections, you could kind of open it up a little yeah. bit, better eat, which is fun for sure. I like how they routed us further, further to the north on the on the west side. You come around, you come instead of running the dike road, yeah, yeah, yeah. through yeah. Uh, through the gravel piles, they dumped us back into. I'm not gonna call them cattails, but kind of a marshy little spot there. Yeah. They dumped us through the cattails on the southeast side, for sure. To the tune where I was, I took, I was following a guy to a left line, and he hit some cattails, and it was just a white plume. I couldn't see anything. So I don't know how many cattail seeds I bring in, but eh. more guys in the. Iron Man class than expected. Honestly, I, I didn't expect that. I expected like four. Yeah. To be honest. 
and so I was thinking like it wasn't gonna be a lot of guys weren't gonna go be hoorah about getting a three hour down in Renner but so the dip, I guess to explain that a little bit when Renner does their three hour you can do up to maybe it is only two man but I think maybe you can do three man teams so you can split time for, for different classes, but then they got an Ironman where you can sign up and run three hours straight. And, I don't know, kind of wanted to put our big boy pants on and try it out like the GNCC boys do and see what three hours felt like. I'm not going to lie. You know, unfortunately, trap fall the plug. I'm, on my end, I, I wasn't prepared. I was... I felt pretty good at two hours. I mean, I'm sure... That the last yeah. hour was brutal, but it, it wasn't even the last hour. It was the last twenty minutes, the last two laps, well, last half hour, I guess I should say. But I was pretty solid, and I guess I mean I took third. I'm really surprised. Like that's yeah, you and me both. My best, <laughs> my best result. I, honestly, I'm surprised, but, but I did feel good. I felt like I was putting down good solid times. My legs were underneath me. I was pushing hard. But on that second to last lap, so that would have been lap. It was four and a half mile course. I was on lap 12. I I fell off. I hit a wall. My eyes couldn't focus in. My legs were barely under me. It was, I was at, anticipating my bike before I even hit the throttle. My timing was just off. I was, I was, I was poor out, but I was, I was spent. That second to last lap, I stopped and got some water and asked how much time I had left from our pit area. And they had just been running stopwatch for when we went by. So they said 20 minutes. And I about had a breakdown. But we pitted away from the finish line a little bit. When I came back around across the finish line, I saw the white flag. That, that kind of gave me that little bit I needed to get through that last lap. Otherwise... Well, otherwise, I don't know. Again, I, I would have kept pushing, but I I was barely on that bike. Yeah, you were at the end of your team. <laughs> it was, I was, I was at did. the end of my rope tying a knot and hanging on. Get, and, uh, get some more calories in. Fucking, uh, yeah, it's a common problem I run into. I just don't. I run out of gas too fast and this stuff. We talk about it from a sled racing standpoint too. Now I gotta figure something out. Get the calories out before this stuff. God, it's tough. It's, it gets complicated. You gotta eat and you gotta drink some water. Yeah, it's real complicated, right? It gets complicated. <laughs> Makes all the difference though. Makes all the difference. Well, that's hard because I do eat and I try to eat as much as I can just from a weight training standpoint, too. But after a while, you just get sick of eating. And I don't know if my body's not very fuel efficient or what, but I can't. I couldn't eat myself into a weak obesity if I tried, I don't think. I could if I wanted to. What did you think of today's course for two hours? Oh, I liked it. Um, the only the only spot that gave me trouble was that first hill, that first one when you cross the road and it's a hop up. And yeah. that hop up always screwed me up. And then I was I felt like I was starting from scratch going up that hill. But I don't know. I, there wasn't really any spots that gave me like consistent trouble. Um, I mean, obviously, I was. I had a few offs. I, I don't. I don't know where I found the, the burrs that got stuck yeah. in my knee. Do you know where you find yours? Ah, uh, yeah. So I took a tumble in the sand whoops section on the left hand side, going through the whoops. Uh, yeah. On that left. track, on the moto track, the far motor track. I felt I had the sand there. Yeah, yeah that's I where took you a got. Digger. Okay. 
yeah, I just, I got off time and got crossed up. And it was stupid because I was just, like, I was just rolling them. Yeah. And they're kind of a tricky distance unless you really, really blitz them. And I rolled the first two, and I got on it to, to blitz it, but I, ended, I come off crossed up, and I somersault through the cockleburs. What did you think of that? There was, like, that little, like, drainage ravine that they dumped you in? I didn't mind that. I mean... It, it freaked me out the first time yeah, I went in it. When you're not ready for it. I was just... I, like, I just felt like... I was gonna get tangled up in there or something. There was one time I, I dumped in and I was I was kind of off kilter, but I, I mean I recovered. But it was just it was like I felt like I was getting wedged in there. They had tires stacked up on the front end too. So what it was is it was a washout actually, and they put tires there to kind of stop the washout. Unless maybe they got some tile there too. I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, and then you came out of it, and then there was another. Yeah, it was another. I was like another washout. I, I was. I looked at that, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna get all. Oh. They were trying to get us. Yeah. Like if you fix your gaze on that, like you're gonna go into it. And it was. I don't know, it would have been kind of hairy if anybody fell into that. But, but that's on that tight stuff like that. I finally, like today, I felt the best I've ever felt on that. But just looking ahead helps helps the guy get through that if I did at, I did well like the first 45 I yeah. think looking at it. I I did usually complete opposite of what normally happens I found my groove early early like really really early I was feeling really good um, and then I don't know after about an hour I kind of got out of it you know, and I just I mean I wasn't like completely off but I was not all the way there. Not all the way there, yeah. for sure. I gotta say, it's the first time... I should race them all... They should advertise them all as a three-hour. Because if I raced a two-hour, like I raced my first two hours, like, I felt good. And I don't know if it was just I was relaxed, because I didn't have time. But even though I was relaxed, I felt like I was giving it a good push. Yeah, I don't know. See, I had that thought process, but it fucked me up. Because I was... I had a good section, and I was speeding through. Felt good. Um, and then all of a sudden, like, in my head, I was like... I was like, you know, you got, like, an hour and a half left. Or you got, like, two hours left of this. Went the other way on And it went the other way on me. And I, and I was like, oh, I should probably ease up a little bit. Because it's like, I, I don't want to fuck up going too fast. And I was like, oh, well. In that first 12 laps, there was only two or three times where I caught myself being like, oh, I'm tired, but I just, I was telling you earlier, mentally this felt like the best race I've had probably ever racing dirt bikes because I, I just kept a short memory and, right. and kept positive. Usually you kind of get, uh, you know, you get worn down a little bit. The boulder gets heavy. The boulder gets heavy, man. But, uh. Two or three times, like I like caught it right away. It was like, nope, we're fine. You feel good. Your legs are under you. It's just focused on the little things, like my feet on the pegs, my legs are under me, and I just kept. It's amazing all that little shit. Well, it just oh, just the mental, the mentality part of it, and that's like translates to racing sleds. I mean, that last year's 500, yeah, was was brutal, but, like, I don't know. Got through it. Got through it. And that's the thing, is, like, the, the hardest part is, it's like, okay, I got through one. That was, that was, I don't want to say it was easy, but it was, it was a thing. We, we showed up, we got through it, but now it's like, okay, can I stay focused for four hours, four hours and, and dialed in and not let my mind wander or not let those negative thoughts creep in and be like, fucked up here, like, you're not gonna recover, fuck, or, like, or the, yeah, stuff, shit like that, where you get frustrated with yourself. But I think fatigue, you know, plays into that, too. Obviously, like, keeping your mindset's gonna st stave off fatigue. Yeah. But if you're, if you didn't prepare, so if you didn't drink, you show up with the calories in, you didn't hydrate beforehand, you didn't get those things done. 
even on the sled side, like if your if your race gear isn't ready to go, you know, if if you know, I think you the second day had trouble with your goggles. Well, because I swapped goggles, uh, fuel stop, and I was taking yeah. air in. I so that last that. 125 miles was the worst experience of my life on a sled. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the problem, his eyes were all bloodshot. He had been getting wind through his goggles onto his face, and his eyes. The the There's problem, the the worst part about that, I should say, the worst part about that was, is I was like, I was hitting like a third wind, and I was feeling really good. It was like, yeah, let's fucking go. And then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, I turned the corner, and all of a sudden, the wind hit my eyes, and I like, I should have just turned around. Should have just turned around and get back and got the goggles. Like I probably would have had a better time with having turned around and gone back. How many miles out were you? Two. Oh shoot! Really? Yeah. Like it was. Yeah. It was. So two. then you then you every mile after that you, you sit and regret not uh -huh. turning around and just making up two. Yeah. I should have just turned around, sped back, grabbed the goggles, and then turned around. That's neither here nor there. Learning. We're, we're, I mean, we're new to this. It's, it's, as hard as that is to say, you know, we've been racing sleds a, a long time, but we're still, we're still, that was our first true 500. I think, yeah, it was we, our first We raced the 500 on Firecats, so in the classic class, we had only done... It was only 250, right? It was only 125. Okay. I think we only did 125 miles, so... Kind of hard to say you raced the I-500 when you only raced 125 miles, but we got her done on the... And then you raced two years ago on that F6. Yeah, semi but, but I crashed that, Did you out. crash first day? Yeah. Okay. That's, did we cobble that together for second day? We cobbled that together so I could race Classic the second day. Ah. Because I had signed up for both. Because I raced, and then that's when my fuel pump froze up too. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. The trials and tribulations of Goodrich, Minnesota, the old I-500. Nah, I, I like that race. I do too. Like, I this, like, this I year like was the, an awesome experience. I like the terrain. I like the, I like I like the river. We, I liked when we caught each other on the North Loop. Was the North Loop was first day? In the ditches? We caught each other in the ditches because remember, didn't we come into the fuel stop? Yeah. <laughs> Flick each other off. <laughs> I gave you the bird. Oh man, good stuff. Yeah, I, if I flipped you off, and then well, and then I came down because you ended up passing me. Because I remember I came down on my bars real hard, and I bent them down. Yeah, that and was it, a cool section. Of it was a cool, too. like it was super fun, and like it, it's the powder was decent, so it yeah. wasn't like super hard packed, and and the, the hitting approaches we wasn't that scary. But I remember I bent those bars down. And there was like, there's still a bunch, there's a bunch of people watching. Sitting on the road. And I was just, and I just like, had those, I leaned, I just, I didn't even like get out of my seat. I just leaned back and like got my, cause I had that little bag on there and I had a little, I don't I think it was an Allen wrench set and I just, Pulled like the bars tight, tightened them up and I just like gave my thumbs up and they're like, yeah, <laughs> I just took <laughs> off again. Like that was, that was pretty cool. That's, that's cool how like that community gets kind of, they get pumped up for that. That's, I mean, and that's awesome to see. Every car on the road is watching the race. Right. And, I mean, the one year, so two years ago, I crashed out the first day in semi-pro on a fire cat, and there was a car right there. I hadn't even, so I knocked my wind out of my cell. I got, I, I yard sailed that sled pretty good. I, um, actually, those pictures just came up. Oh, really? On for some reason, Google Photos hmm. like just said, "Do you remember this day?" And it was just your total fire cat, but <laughs> in pieces. It was. Uh, I think it was Aiden Johnson's cousin. Okay. And wife or girlfriend, whatever. They were right there. I mean, down in the ditch. You good? You good? I saw it. I saw it. You know, and I was just. Ugh. I was trying, I'm gasping for air because I knocked my wind out, out of myself. And but they, you know, helped me get my stuff out of the way. Sat in a 
sat in the car with them in the heat and stuff so I could call you guys and say because it was bitterly cold that was, that was, was we took off it was negative 40 yeah that was awful it was really cold because in that that next day like I said my phone pump was froze and it was, yeah. and it was off Ugh. yeah it was miserable cold that year this year I, was there's warm. a part of me right now that, that kind of misses it the cold yeah yeah like a hundred percent this time of year I always I I'm in the mood for winter. Yeah. And cool mornings we have. You know, it's it's October. It's like okay, I'm ready. Yeah. Let's no, I am, off I'm ready to see my breath and yeah. have it be negative twenty when I wake up in the morning. It's just something horribly wrong with it, but refreshing about it at it's, the same time. It's so refreshing. I, mean, I don't know. Like, it's like the most miserable, but most pleasant. I don't know. There's somehow crisp, like like crystal. Like you can almost feel the air. Yeah. I don't know. It's just something refreshing about it. And and you're doing it. You're racing sleds. Yeah. You know, we're hanging out as a family and as a racing family. You get to know everybody that's racing cross country, and you just you get to go see your family every other weekend. Kind of deal. It's pretty sweet something to get excited about here we are uh, coming off a of dirt bike race talking about talking nothing, about sleds nothing but sleds but, but that's kind of the premise behind us racing bikes anyway right it's just trying hopefully to, it transfers over a little bit get, get some, more seat time get some seat time some endurance um, what transfers over great yeah. yeah I don't know it's kind of fun this bike stuff is it's different Obviously, the machine's all, all together different, but it's a different style of racing. You meet some different people, um, but it's, it's the same kind of deal. You know, it's, it's, it's a good time. It, and maybe, and you correct me, but you've been to more of these things. I, like, I feel like the, the moto, it's, it seems like, it seems like there's, like, a, a line, and there's, like, super relaxed Guys, yeah, that show up and are there, yeah. and like it's just, and the, I mean, obviously, you got your hardcores who are there to, to win every race, but like, I feel like there's more just like show up, dump your bike on the dirt, let's go, run like, what you run, yeah, people are helping. I feel each like other. there's a little bit more of that. Um, you, you see that, you see that on the sled side too. It's so like cross country is super friendly, right. Like, everybody's in and out of each other's trailer and we're helping people out and we're borrowing shocks to people or getting shocks borrowed, you know, just helping your fellow racers out, right? you know, and, and uh, I've heard not all types of racing is like that. I heard some of it gets kind of, if you're not in the crowd, you're not in the crowd or, you know, in, in with the in crowd. Right. And... Which I don't get. I don't. I don't understand gatekeeping of any sports like like yeah. this. It's like why? Like you want to you want to promote it and you want to just show how accessible it is and you just don't. Why put a bad taste in a, a new a new rider's mouth about like giving someone the cold shoulder? Like I, it just doesn't make sense to me. It's like we want sports to grow. Um, more than anything, like the more competition, the better. And that's the approach we take with it, right? I mean, if you, if anyone was to ever need anything and would ask, it's, it's, dang near shirt off our back to try to help them all. I tried to give Gunner my sled, an otter tail. Yeah, that's I, right. I, I, like, cause he, cause he ripped through his cooler. Yep. And I was just like, I was like, it's just sitting here. <laughs> like, you can use it. He wouldn't. He wouldn't bite. But yeah stuff like that because then that same race there was that young kid uh blew his shock out did we did we tear a shock out of the skid and let him borrow yeah it? we yeah. did couldn't remember no i knew he had asked for it yeah anyway oh shoot i screwed this up that's okay but it's the same on the bike side too like we were talking to guys we hadn't met before today. I don't know, it's just, it, it's super friendly, which is refreshing, because, yeah, it's competition, but not, it, 
if anyone is really honest with themselves, like we're not doing this to get rich. No. This. No. <laughs> the um, the age-old saying, the only way to make a million dollars racing is to start with two, is so accurate that it's, yeah. It's. I mean. Unf un unfortunate, a little. But at the same time, it's, it's the way it is. It is what it is. Like, it's, it's, everything's got its expenses. If it, if it was easy, everybody would do it. That's too, true. You know. Boy, these streets are a little bumpy. Hopefully the bikes are up, right? Oh my gosh. I missed my turn to go get our pizza, and it turned into a fiasco. I don't know premise behind I guess this you know where Trav and I live we end up we end up having to drive yeah everywhere a long freaking ways no matter no matter where the race is no matter where we're going it uh, seems to never fail I mean today's the, today is the closest we ever get right in any of the sports right and we were an hour away hour away but uh all the sled stuff, all the D23 dirt bike stuff. Four hour solo, minimum. Four hour minimum. So I, our goal, I think, is we do do something like this. Um, so, so there, that explains the, the truck talk. We're in the truck, we're driving, we got time. We sit and talk about God Everything knows what under the sun. to the ends of the earth anyway. So might as well, <clears throat> might as well record it when but, we got time and it's probably going to be minimally edited. It's going to have bad words in it. So it's going to have bad words. I apologize. And it's going to have sunshine and whatever the heck else. We're in the truck. Yeah. We're doing it. But anyway, we're going to pick up a pizza, cut this one short, and sign off. I'd say today was unfortunate that you had to follow a plug and not finish because it was pretty pretty satisfying finishing on my side um and even even more meaningful to come out with a third place that, yeah. that meant quite a bit to me so that's oh, cool yeah. but anyway till next time maybe next weekend maybe not we'll see we got we'll we shoot got, for next weekend we got sled stuff to start thinking about too so yeah truck talk episode one peace out <laughs>